Hello. Where do I start? Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just gave God praise on this yes. morning. Um, I got a phone call, and it brought me in this area. And I was like, who's calling me at 7 something in the morning? This is my prayer time. Hi, Elizabeth. <laughs> and so I got on the phone, and the phone call went like this. You remember me? <laughs> at 7 something in the morning? And I was like, okay, yes, yeah, so you were my supervisor. And she goes, well, I need help. I was like, well, okay. She said, I didn't mean to call you, but she had been calling me prior, and I kept ignoring the number, but she called me again this morning, and I said, well, let me answer. And um, I said, this is not a mistake that you called me. I said, I said um, I'm a pastor now. I said, so what is it that you need? And she began to tell me the A, Bs, and Cs of what was needed. And I said, well, I can help you. And so she goes, but people want money. Here I go, no, I'm yes. a servant. Yes. And I will come and help out. It's right here on, where's Hagger Street? Joseph Deacon, where's Hagger? But it's a 3 2 area code. Yeah. You know, and so I said, well, Pastor Scott had called me a couple of weeks ago, and um, I was pissed. <laughs> and I was like, why is he calling me? You know, and prior to that, my brother had just asked about him. And I was like, well, why are you asking about him? You know, and so God had to check me. And he said, you have ought in your heart. And so I began to say, God, I didn't know that. You know, and I said, well, I don't want that. And I asked you to create in me a clean heart. And wherever that crack is, I need you to heal me. Because, see, when we pray and stuff, and you have all this stuff in you, mm -hmm. God can't hear you. He said, yes. the only the pure in heart. Oh, the heart she'll see God. So if you yes. are holding on to any form of bitterness, mm -hmm. any form of unforgiveness, Come on now. any form of jealousy, whatever it is, only the pure in heart will see God. Amen. And so I begin to decree and declare Psalms 51, creating me, creating me. Creating me, you know, yes, yes. daily. Yes. Creating me, creating me, God. I need your deliverance because I don't want to hold anything yes, against anyone because we're in a time where we don't know when God is coming back and we have to be ready. We have to be heaven bound. And so I just give God praise that when the phone call yes, came Lord. through and we had just had that conversation about him on the other the day prior, I was able to say, hey, you know, because he revealed in me what was in me, you know, creating me a clean heart. That's a desperate cry. Creating me the word of God works. And I just came through. I had been housebound since June. I I was I was just talking about yesterday from 2011 to 2015, uh, well, 2011, I was diagnosed with cancer. And from 2011 to 2015, I had 15 cancer-related surgeries where my body wouldn't heal. And so in 2015, the Lord spoke to me all of me and said, this is your year. This Amen. is your year. Amen. I'm going to heal you. Yeah. And so, you know, people, and I don't take anything from, from people speaking to your life and stuff, but you have to have an ear to hear God, you know. And so we did this, the surgery was complete and everything. I still know this pain and, you know, just living. And then one day I got sick again, and the um, doctor, he said, I was at the doctor doing the follow-up, and he said, Tina, what's that? 
I said, that's the pain. And they immediately ran tests. And the test showed that I had a blockage in my kidney. That's another side effect. And so they, um, they did, uh, they set me up for surgery. And it was a two part. And but that second part, the surgeon came in and he said, you, he said, this is going to be complicated. But his assistant said, I was an easy fix. So I took that. I'm like, hey, I'm an easy fix. I'm just declaring, declaring, I'm an easy fix. So the day of the surgery, you know, I normally have my sister, she's a nurse, and my brother, but they wasn't there that day. And my daughters were there, well, my one daughter, because my mother was in North Carolina. And I'm, and I'm looking at her like, you never been to a surgery with me. And I was cracking jokes and stuff, but she couldn't get with me. You know, this is serious. But I knew what God was going to do. On, so yeah. anyway, we get into, they wheel me into surgery. And when I wake up, I, I didn't know where I was, you know. Yes. And I was the Korean because it was at Temple. And they, and they was like, I said, do y'all share rooms? They said, yeah. I said, I'm not sharing the room. <laughs> and so the doctor goes, well, I don't know. I said, listen, we ain't doing no surgery until, I get, until you say to me, I'm going to have me a private room. Well, lo and behold, I did. Amen. And Amen. So Thank you, Lord. When we, when it got, when we got, when we got, when I woke up, I was, the doctors and stuff was around. They was like, hi, you know, how do you feel? This is a new day. I'm like, what day is it? And so they told me, and they said it was a 10 hour surgery. They said, we, it wasn't any problems with the, um, the kidneys, that was an easy fix, remember. That's what the guy said, and I told him that's what God did. But the complications, I came into complications. They said, when they opened me up, I looked like Star Wars, where Hahnemann with radiation, it was shooting my body everywhere. And it, they said it was hitting cells, they shouldn't have been hitting and everything like that. And um, they said, um, the doctor said, he said, I could have done it. He said, but I, I needed a surgical team. And that surgical team, when he, he said that surgical team was, was um, available, he said, that's unheard of. And so when he was telling the story to my family, he was crying. And I'm looking at him. He said, you were one of the worst cases we ever came across. He said, but I told the family. He said, I couldn't. He said, I told my colleagues I couldn't leave it like that. You know, and when he said it, it rang something in my heart. You know, we have a prayer line that we're on at 3 a.m. And I share with them, yes. you know, we need to be that way with one another. Yes. You know, no matter what happens, mm -hmm. We're crying out for you. Yes. You know, we're standing in the gap for your family because on the 3 a.m. prayer line, we're praying for the families, we're praying for the youth. Yes. We are we are decreeing, we're declaring, we are we are we are applying the, 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 the word of God, we are applying the blood of Jesus, Jesus over everyone's life. It doesn't matter if someone says something against you, it's the enemy. You know, and so we have to get above, you know, and that's where God had to do with me. That crack that I was holding on to, you know, that stuff, whatever it is. On, you know, God on, said, listen, I want to get into that, your childhood. I want to hit that dorm and stuff. On, the stuff right. that just makes you mad that you yes. want to hold on to. God on, says, now. I want it. Yes. Hiya, my shady book. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I couldn't leave her like that. And that's how I feel about God's people. I will stand in the gap. I can't leave. I get your name. You're on the prayer list. My neighbors know that I, my house is the prayer house. The pastors begin to raise up and they took over the prayer line because I couldn't do it. They took skin from both sides of my mouth to heal. Amen. The kidney. Yes, Lord. The opposite side of that is. Thank my cousin Jesus. was going through the same thing. Yes. And she died. Yes. Mm. I lived. Thank you, Lord. This Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. You got to know God. There's not a time to, to, to back 
off. Stand. Read your word. Get into the presence of God. If yes, you pray yes. three minutes, pray five. If you pray six minutes, then pray seven. But the point is, get into his presence. You know, pray. Pray the word of God. In Job 36 and 32, it says, he covers his eyes and he strikes the mark. And he's doing it when you speak it. Your mark can be, the target is your family. The target is whatever circumstances or whatever you're going through. God is striking the mark. Amen? Amen. 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 Amen.